Okay, now for question number six from uh, February, March 2019, paper 4 2. Um, here we have a question about areas and perimeters and such. Uh, this is question number six. So here the question has given us this shape. It says the diagram shows a company logo made from a rectangle and a sector of a circle, major sector of a circle. Um, the circle has a, a center O and a radius OA. So the radius is OA, which is 0.5 centimeters. Um, OA equals OD, of course. This is the radius of this semicircle. And they're both 0.5. And it says from A to B, from A to B up here, is 1.5 centimeters. It's a rectangle. Okay. It says um, E is a point in OC. Okay, E is a point in OC such that OE equals 0 0.25 centimeters. Okay, an angle OED is 90 degrees. Calculate the perimeter of the logo. Okay, now the perimeter of the logo. Well, that's the length of all the lines in this shape. So, first of all, we have this rectangle. We know the length from O to C is 1.5 centimeters. The length from O to C is 1.5 centimeters. Okay, so that's 1.5 centimeters all the way from O up to C. And from B to C is 0 0.5 centimeters. Why? Because this is a rectangle. Opposite sides in a rectangle are equal in, in length. Okay, and we also have this line here, O to D, which we know is 0 0.5 centimeters. And we have the length of the arc from A to D. Okay, so let's just write down what we have. I'll put, it, I'll put, the, I'll put the steps here so we can see what's happening. So we have B to C is 0 0.5. And we have A to B is, is 1.5. And we have O to C is also 1.5. Okay. Um, now, we're not going to include O to A because that's not part of the outline of the shape. That's inside the shape. shape. So you don't include O to A. It's just inside the shape. You, you know, it can't be included in the perimeter. The perimeter is the length of the outline of the whole logo. So what's left now, we've done, we've dealt with this, dealt with this, we've dealt with that, we've dealt with that. We don't need this. But then what we need is from A to D, the arc, the arc, the major arc from A to D. Okay, so what we need to do in order to find the length of this arc, we know that the length of an arc is given by the angle over 360 times 2 pi r. It's this fraction of the circumference of the circle that we need. We need the circumference of the circle, but only a fraction of it. What fraction do we need of it? This angle fraction of this angle makes with 360. So we need to find what this angle is. Now what we can what we can say is that this angle must be 90 degrees here because it's in a rectangle, it's a corner of a rectangle. And this angle here, well this angle here can be found by this triangle O D O E. If you look at the triangle D O E, I'll just draw it over here. Let me use my special pen. Oops, that didn't work out very well, did it? Let me try again. Mm -mm. Straight down. Okay. Straight down, across, and up. Okay, that's acceptable. All right, so now, that's a right angle. This is D, this is E, and this is O. Okay? And what we need to find is this angle here. I'm going to call it the angle X for now. Well, I know that this is 0 0.5 centimeters because that's the radius of this sector. I know from OTE is 0 0.25 centimeters because we were told that in the question. So I can use the cosine ratio to find this angle. I know that this is the adjacent and this is the hypotenuse. So I can say the cosine of the angle we're trying to find is equal to 0 0.25 over 0 0.5. So that's going to be a half. So the cosine of a half is 60 degrees. Okay, 60 degrees, but just to make sure that you can see what's going on, let me just get rid of this, menu 1. Make sure it's in degree mode, which it is, um, inverse cosine of 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.5, and that will give us 60 degrees, so this is 60 degrees. Okay, so therefore, the whole angle here, 
Okay, let me change the color so you can see clearer. The whole angle, okay, the angle DOA, basically, the angle from there all the way around to there, DOA, the whole angle there, must be 60 plus 90, which is 150 degrees. Okay, it's 150 degrees. All right, so the whole of the angle is 150 degrees, so therefore theta must be 360, take away 150. Okay, 360, take away 150, which is going to be 210. Okay, so we got, whoops, got two calculators here. So I'm going to do um, 150, uh, sorry, uh, 90 plus our answer. Okay, 150 and 360 minus that. That gives us 210. So this angle here is 210 degrees. So we can say that AD, the length of the arc AD, is going to be the angle, which is 210 over 360 times the formula for the circumference of the circle, which is 2, times pi times r, which is 0 0.5 centimeters. Okay, so we can just find out what AD is. I'm going to write it and leave it in terms of pi uh, to keep accuracy. So I'm going to have uh, 210 over 210 over 360 times, oops, up there, times 2 times pi times what, 0 0.5. Okay, and that will give me 7 12 pi. So 7 pi over 12 is the length of the arc. 7 pi over 12. That's the length of the arc from A to D. Okay, so we can now say that the perimeter of the logo is going to be 0 0.5. Well, it's going to be basically all of these added together. So you're going to have 3, 3.5. So 1.5 plus 0.5 plus the length of this arc plus is 0.5. So we've also got to add OD to this, by the way. OD must also be added to this because that is also part of the perimeter of the shape because I've got up to there plus is 0.5. Okay, so that 0.5 plus that gives you 1 plus 3 is 4. So you end up with 4 plus 7 pi over 12. So you take your answer, 7 pi over 12, and just add and that gives you answer 5.8325 5.8325 so you have 5.8325 which gives you 3SF because nothing else is mentioned 5.83 centimeters 5.83 centimeters and that's the answer to part A now part B tells us to find the area of the logo Okay, so the area of this logo will be the area of this rectangle plus the area of this sector. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to take this diagram. I'm going to make a copy of it if it will let me to do it. And I'm going to put it on the next page so I can see what's going on. Okay, when you're doing this, you just keep turning the page over, I guess. Or maybe it's on the facing page for your paper. Well, here I'm just going to make this a bit smaller so I can... Put it over here. You can see what's happening. Okay, so yeah. Oops. Move that down a bit. Okay, so now I've got the area of the rectangle. Okay, which is 0 0.5 times 1.5. So you've got the area, let's call this um, part one and part two. The area of part one is 0 0.5 times 1.5. Okay, that's a half 1.5, which is 0 0.75. And the area of part 2 is the area of this sector, which is the angle over 360. Let me write the, uh, the formula here. The area of a sector is the angle over 360 times pi r squared. So in the same kind of reasoning, it's just this fraction of the whole area of the circle we want. Okay, just the fraction that this angle makes with 360. So you've got 210 as your angle over 360, instead of 2 pi r, this time we're going to use pi r squared because we're finding what ratio is of the of the circle's area. Okay, so 210 over 360 times pi times 0 0.5 squared and let's see what that gives us. Okay, so we have 210 over 360 times pi times 0 0.5 squared. 
Okay, that gives us 7, oh, 7 pi over 48 in this exact form. And I'm going to write that, okay, as, um, press STD button. So I get 0 0.4581, 0 0.4581, which is to 3SF 0 0.458 centimeters squared. And that is the area, oh, sorry. Silly me. That's the area of the sector. Don't forget, you got the area of the rectangle plus the area of the sector. Okay, so you have your answer here and you have to add to it 0 0.75. Okay, so that gives you 1.2081. 1.2081. So that gives you 1.21 to 3SF. Okay, 1.21 centimeters so be very careful about that I found the area of a1 then I found the area of a2 and you know almost forgot to add them together okay so in an exam situation that's quite um, you know common so be very careful you know you're normally in a rush and stuff so be very careful to you know take, take care think a bit before you write the answer down then it says a mathematical similar logo is made is drawn the area of this logo is 77.44 centimeters squared Cal calculate the radius of the major sector in this logo. Okay, so if it's mathematically similar, okay, then it has a area which is, um, you can say, let me just do something first. Let me just save this answer. I'm going to press store and A. It's stored as A. Okay, sorry. So if it's mathematically similar, okay, that means the ratio of the areas is the same, is, is, is like, um, in this and it gives you a particular proportion and the ratio of the lengths is going to be the square root of the ratio of the areas the ratio of the lengths in two similar shapes okay will be a certain ratio and the ratio of the areas in those two shapes will be the square of the ratio of the length and the ratio of the volumes if it was a 3d shape will be the cube of the ratio of the lengths so if we know that the area in a similar logo is 77.4 and we want to find um, we know the area of our shape is, is 1.2081, okay, and we want to find um, the radius of the major sector in this second shape, so you, you can say the radius is equal to, okay, now the radius in our sector is 0 0.5, so we know that 0 0.5 is going to be changed by a certain ratio, okay, and we know that this, the ratio of the, let me just do this afterwards, the ratio of the areas Okay, now, first of all, this obviously, the second one is obviously bigger than the first one, okay, because its area is way bigger, all right? So we know that the radius of the second logo is going to be bigger as well. So we know that if I divide the area of the uh, bigger shape by the smaller shape, I'll get it's bigger over smaller. So I'm going to have 1.2081 written, I'm going to leave it as the exact form written in my calculator. Now that's the ratio of the, the areas, okay, of the two logos. The ratio of the lengths will be the square root of the ratio of the areas. Okay, another way you can do this is we want to find the radius. We know that if we divide that by 0 0.5, that's the radio, that's the ratio of the two radii, okay, the bigger one over the smaller. And we know that that's, um, if I square that, it will give me the same as the ratio of the the areas of the two, which is going to be 77.4, 4 over 1.2081. So this is basically the same thing, because then you're going to have to square both of these, okay? You're going to have to square this, all right? And then you're going to have to multiply both sides by 0 0.5, then take the square root of all of this side. So you'll end up with the square root of 0 0.5, um, squared, which will give you this, times the square root of all of this. So this is a way of doing it without going through that step, which is perfectly fine whichever way you prefer to do it. Okay, here, this, this way you take the length that you know, you know that it's going to get bigger, so you put the ratio of the areas as bigger over smaller, and we want the ratio of the length, so we take the square root of the ratio of the areas. And that should give us an answer. So I've got 0 0.5 times, I'm going to have a the square root of, fraction 77.44 divided by my answer from the part that I stored which was um, let me just make sure 
So shift, recall, yeah, 1.20, it was this, this value there. So there we have it. And that should give us an answer 4.0034.003, 4.0034. So we can say 4.0023 SF centimeters will be the radius of the um, major sector in this logo. Okay. All right. So there we have the answer to that part. Then it says a gold model is made. This model is a prism with a cross section area of 77.44 centimeters squared. Okay. All right. So there we have. Okay, um, the, this gold model is 15 millimeters thick. One cubic centimeter of gold has a mass of 19 grams. Calculate the mass of the gold model in kilograms. Okay, so now a model here, all right, um, it's, it's going to have a volume, all right, because you've got 77.4 centimeters squared as it's, as it's uh, let me just do this. Let me take this, what we've copied and pasted there, and just paste it down here so we've got an idea of the shape. Okay, so copy. Bring it down here. Okay. So now, basically what they're saying is that this is we've got thickness now. Right? It's three-dimensional. Yeah, and the thickness as it goes around like this. Okay, it's made up of gold, and the thickness is 15 millimeters, which is zero point, which is one point, um, sorry, zero point one five centimeters divided by ten. Okay, we know the cross-sectional area is 77.44, as we're told in the first part of the question. All right, so it says one cubic centimeter of gold has a mass of 19 grams. So um, one cubic centimeter has a mass of 19 grams. 19 grams divided by 1,000 will tell you how many kilograms that is, right? So one centimeter cube has a mass of 19 over 1,000 kilograms. We want to find the mass of gold of the gold model in kilograms. Okay, so first of all, the volume of the gold model, the volume of the model is going to be 77.44 times 0.15. Okay, 77.44 times 0 0.15. And that gives you 11.616. 11.616 centimeters cubed. So we have 11.616 centimeters cubed is going to have a mass of X kilograms. So we need to find the mass of this. You're going to have X is equal to 19 over 1,000 times 11.61 okay this is using pure ratios here so we just take that value there we have 19 uh, oops let me just do that the answer was what before okay that was our answer before right yeah okay so we multiply that by 19 divided by a thousand three okay and that gives you your answer of 0 0.22 Zero seven. So zero point two two zero seven. Zero point two two zero seven. Dot dot dot. So it's going to be, sorry, zero seven. So it'll be zero point two two one kilograms. Okay. Zero point two two zero seven. That was. Okay. So zero point two two one kilograms, and that's the answer for the last part of this question. Okay, and this was question number one. This is question number six. Okay, so there we have it. So for the last part, for this part here, we use similarity and the ratio of the uh, the lengths is the square root of the ratio of the areas. And for part two, we use ratios in terms of we know what one centimeter cubed mass is. So we've got to find the mass of the volume that you know we have to find for this and the volume of a prism is its cross-sectional area times how deep it is how high it is so they told us the cross-sectional area and they've told us how high it is how deep it is we multiply those make sure that they're the same unit okay that, that's given in millimeters that's given in centimeters 1.5 millimeters is divided by 10 0.15 centimeters okay and there we have the answer to that question